Welcome to the AI Ireland podcast, your window into the world of AI innovation on the island of Ireland. Join us as we explore how AI is harnessed to tackle both business and societal challenges, revealing the cutting edge solutions emerging from this vibrant AI community. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates and insights in the world of AI. Hello everyone, it is Mark Kelly here. I hope you're doing really, really well wherever you are. Today, in the run-up to the AI Awards, which are on the 26th of November, we have got the finalists for the best application of AI in an SME. And they're a company called uh, Ardanis. And we've got Stefan Gore, Group CIO, and then JC Durbin, Head of AI Innovation. Stefan and JC, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having so you're in the world of software development consultancy, and you've been going, what, it's kind of seven or eight years now? Yeah, we're um, eight years in business. So we set up in, in 2016. Originally, I found it by a few founders who we were, I suppose, very experienced in technology projects. Uh, all of us would have been, you know, at, uh, at quite senior levels, you know, principal engineer, lead engineer, CTO, you know, all those kind of levels. And we had lots of experience in what makes a, a technology project succeed or fail. And I suppose we were quite opinionated on, you know, what are the things that really lead to a successful project or, or a failing project? And we realized that there's actually an offering here that we didn't see in the market. There's people who do technology really well. There's people who do you know, project management. There's people who, who do process management, all that kind of thing. But there, there was something missing. And that was the sort of the, the approach that we, we went after. And I think what we realized is when you put together things like a uh, code craftsmanship, so understanding how to do technology really well. So there's a difference between code that's written well and code that's written poorly. They might do the same thing, but there's a quality difference. So we understand that really well. But then there's other things like doing test driven development and automation, which just gives you the consistency and uh, knowing that things are stable, but also being able to explain uh, the, the technology to the customer in a really relatable way. So by using uh, you know automated tests and so on, they can actually understand what's going on by looking at a report that explains the software to them. So you know those kind of things were important. And then there's other aspects, things like you know the uh, the process that you're using. So everyone talks about agile, but does everyone really understand agile or do it correctly? And really, it's it's not a one case fits all. It's a really you have to apply the bits that fit and make you know uh, adjust and make it work for the project. I think that's the key difference that we have is that we really partner with the with our customers because we have to have a shared understanding of what they're trying to achieve and then work around the technology to fit that. And I suppose that's, it's a bit about where our, even our tagline, you know, we listen and innovate. It's that thing of, we have to understand what they're doing and then we can apply our technology expertise to help them and, and bring them where they're going. And it's all about uh, being very transparent. Like the customer has to feel really, really involved, you know, and, and aware of what's going on. Uh, the, the key thing for us is to deliver, to deliver value early. Um, so we're, we're very much focused on what you do has to have a, a, a very specific goal and outcome, and it has to be a, a, you know, a quick outcome. We don't want these big bang approaches. Everything has to be continuous value uh, or continuous delivery and, and bringing real value. I think the listening aspect is actually really difficult because people feel, okay, yeah, I'm listening, but have you heard what I've said? And then having the empathy of the design thinking to actually go on that journey in yeah. their shoes and then understanding that this is also a change agent project yeah. to, to to work to work through too because if we were just to do statement of work and to go right you've been statement of work and you kind of you it, it you don't feel so great then you're necessarily going to feel like you're going to want to go on this journey because yeah. once you start to get some wins that momentum starts to come true but the reality is is you're kind of like that tour guide or that kind of you know mountaineering guide that's kind of say okay we're going to sprint to this next bit we're going to hold base and you know there's yeah. quite an awful lot in it and i suppose when you're in the sector for so long and you're wearing multiple hats you start to see what's good a process and what's a what's a really shaky flaky process yeah, I, I think that's it. Um, um, I suppose if you're going with that analogy of, you know, the, the trying to climb a hill or get, you know, getting all the, the equipment, I mean, there's lots of companies out there in that analogy who have all the kit and then there might be companies who have, you know, the expert guides who, who can tell you where everything is, but not off, they don't often connect those dots. And then if they do, do they really adjust it to the experience of the person they're bringing up the mountain? So, you know, if you're dealing with a, a big enterprise with lots of enterprise processes, you do things in one way. And if you're dealing with a small startup, you know, you do things differently. And and that's the thing, we were very conscious of bringing the customer along the, the journey that they get the success and the value they need. 
and it's not the same rinse and repeat every time. So tell us a little bit about uh, the AI solution, Aileen, and how does it streamline processes, improve agent efficiencies, and enhance customer experience? So we've got it down for call centers, Sorry. particularly in the financial and regulated industry sectors. So it'd be interested to probably get a little bit more of a context around why you found that to be your, your sweet spot. So Ardon has created a almost like an incubation and innovation division to do development on AI with the idea that we were looking to build something that had value that could be turned into a product that we could use with our customer base. And one of the things that we looked at immediately was that AI is not a solution. It's a, a tool in a toolbox of solutions. So the idea of using generative AI to kind of solve all problems, you know, the big hammer, everything's a nail approach was not what we wanted to do. So we wanted to build something that was usable, uh, integratable platform derived that could target specific solutions for customers. So the original process is we built this platform, which is a form of a, of a Gentic AI that's very controllable and modular. Um, the idea of that isn't novel in and of itself, but the way we view it, how we zoom out from this kind of agentic workflow and the way we put the guardrails and controls on there is novel. And the idea of using this as a solution that can integrate into any product, any, any third party via whatever connectivity was also, we felt very novel. And the way we got into the call centers in the FinTech space would be primarily based on, again, listening to our customers. It was what was the needs that our customers had. And in the development cycle, we had a couple of customers. I mean, everyone was asking, you can imagine last year with all of our partners, oh, we need AI, we need an AI solution, we need this. and. So part of what we did is like, is the slowdown, let's find the problem first. Let's not just say AI is a solution. What are the problems that you're having? What are the needs that you have? And there was these reoccurring needs in the industries that we were working with. A lot of our industries are FinTech. And one of them that was really addressable based on our solution was these call centers, the idea of integrating AI into call centers. And based on that need that was, we were pulled by our customers, that need, we ended up develop, developing a product on top of our platform. Um, so we took the, the basic platform, built processes around it that integrate agnostically into any of them, Zendesk, ServiceNow, whatever, Salesforce product. And so that's kind of how it evolved. It evolved as a solution to a need, and then it turned into a product that addresses a, a wide range of needs. That's the general journey that we took. People that, from a kind of a wider context, what I was quite surprised to learn at the start of this year was how call centers and people that work in call centers it's an extremely stressful job right it so you've is. got a, a lot of people that will call someone up from call center they're usually having a bad day right so that's the first kind of collision point you're dealing with someone who's probably frustrated that they've had to have to make the call and people that are usually working in this field they're again not always but they're probably kind of maybe out of college or maybe they're kind of in a stopgap year or, or maybe they're more seasoned, but it's not necessarily a long-term gig that you're going to be in a call center. And sometimes that means that you can actually have a lot of fluctuation of staff. But for what the, the agents have to deal with, there's so many different complications that they have to manage through people. So being able to provide a solution to that for a company, I'm guessing is very, very important because they probably have the peaks and troughs of people coming in and out of that job. And then you've got the additional stress from people, customers who are calling on it. Um, maybe that's just my big experience in there. I'm not sure if that's similar to the industry you're seeing. You, you, you cover a couple of things there, sorry, Stefan. There's a couple oh, of things yeah. that are really interesting. So one is the, is the dynamic scalability that AI brings. But one of the other ones, we view the idea of using AI in call centers is that there, there's the trifecta. The customer is going to win. Their, their experience is improved. The agent, which is what you referenced there, the agent's experience is improved, which I'll touch on in a second. Then, of course, the, the company's experience in terms of their ability to scale and their financial aspects improve. The agent's experience is one that I think a lot of people miss. There's all this big fear that AI is taking our jobs, you know, as an engineer as well that's that big fear but really what it is is it's an assistant that increases the quality of the life of the agent so you can imagine there are certain things in all call centers across all industries that are repetitive there's this drudgery element of the same question with the same answer a lot of these are kind of cut and paste things that's one thing that ai can do really really well is the repetitive low-hanging fruit it can automate that process 
The other thing that people don't really are aware of is certain types of industries have very high stress interactions with vulnerable clients or very complicated, difficult conversations that can actually cause difficulties for the, the agents themselves in sort of dealing with that, especially if the calls come in through kind of, you know, your tier one agent who's only been there for three or four months, that agent has to interact with difficult content and then route that content to someone who's more trained and more able to deal with that. AI can immediately identify vulnerable customers, difficult content, and route those specifically to people who are trained for it. So you can remove a lot of that issue of people burning out through uh, traumatic experiences or difficult experiences, as well as kind of um, providing the information that the agent needs to, to make answers. So there's a lot that it can do beyond just kind of automating. Yeah, yeah. I think um, one of the things that, that we've experienced with this is that it really improves the the quality of life for the the agents as in uh you know you mentioned there about the you know the stressful uh, aspect of it the you know just getting complaints or you know just being overwhelmed a, a lot of contact centers it's just the you know they're from one thing to the next no time to to think but what the using ai does is is take away as as jc mentioned a lot of that drudgery but it, it's giving people the the ability then to to focus on the real value driven thing, the thing where there's real human input needed, you know, where there's empathy, consideration, escalation, thought to be put into a response. And therefore they have much more valuable jobs, like interesting and valuable. And they're they're more into careers then. It's not this kind of thing of, oh, someone will come in for a few weeks and, and go away. It's people are really getting engaged in being in the in the contact centers longer term, which is, you know, that's good for I suppose the environment in the contact center anyway, but also good for the customers and that they have long-term engagement that, you know, they don't have high turnover in there. But also when they do have people coming on, the AI processes uh, work uh, really well as a, as a training uh, thing yeah. because onboarding, although they may not onboarding. have to... Oh, sorry, JC, go Sorry, it accelerates onboarding quite dramatically. Yeah, yeah, because the AI will actually give them the the answers or the, the information that would be needed. It may not do, you know, if it's not doing the response, it'll even present it with them. So if they're unsure, the AI is kind of going, well, previous cases would have been handled in this way. And here's, you know, here's the information that's relevant here. Or, if, you know, and it can um, answer automatically, but maybe in the case of, say, vulnerability or a complaint, you know, you probably do want someone to, to, to handle that. But at least it can go, here's why the complaint happened or here's what, you know, here's why we see this person as vulnerable yeah. and here's the relevant information. What, what, what I've been so impressed is from some of the research that's showing that an agent who's using an AI agent is performing more successfully than without. Yeah. And the top performing agents, if you replicate or learn their phrases, their tones, the questions they ask, these different things, if you take that from a training perspective, you can fast track those other agents to, to get there. And from the onboarding, offboarding, to me, that feels like one of the most undervalued use of generative AI and I think it's an incredible because let's say you've got someone who's experienced who's leaving the firm if you ask that person 50 or 60 questions and they answer it in their you know authentic self you take and document that for the newbie that's coming through and you train them on on that real insights rather than Bobby being away or Jennifer being away and kind of all the cars fall down you've got that tacit knowledge really built in for that one specific role. And it means that customers get a better experience because the agents are learning on their own time. They don't feel as kind of worried or concerned asking Michelle or Jennifer or John the same question again. They can ask the agents. And again, it's, it's all built on your proprietary data, those insights. So there's so much that you can take to the, to the next level. And then you've got the wonderful application of Gen AI with the summarization of previous contact commentary and getting insights from different systems. So they feel empowered to make better decisions because they've got the, the information at their fingertips. Yeah, and uh, an interesting aspect there is um, for a lot of the contact centers we, uh, we talk to, they're, they're looking for an accuracy when there's agents involved of somewhere between 80 and 90%. It depends, you know, people will make mistakes, but they're kind of going, you know, we're looking for between 80 and 90%. When it comes to alien, they want above 90, 95%, but what we're actually getting is 99% accuracy. And when we get the, you know, the slight operations, it just gets tuned or changed so that it doesn't happen again. You know, and they're usually really, really edge cases. So, so when you ask an agent, you know, with a certain level of experience or alien, 
more often than not, Alien is going to have the accurate answer. I'm not saying the agent wouldn't, but Alien has all of the knowledge from all of the, you know, the previous cases, and the agent has just their experience. So, so it, it is very good in the, in that sort of aspect of I'm not sure how to respond so, on that. Yeah. So with that accuracy, and I think for a lot of people listening in, you have to get the data right hmm. because fun, fundamentally. If the data isn't correct and up to date, the systems are going to fail, right? They're not going to give the accuracy, and and that's that's that data journey. So, do you work with your customers and really kind of helping them work through those key milestones to make sure it's, that data is fit for purpose? Key part of what we do. It's it, it, the funny thing that we find is that human error is a huge issue in the initial development of these. So, for example, we have a process where we have a kind of a silent mode where the it, the information is running, but it's not being presented to the agents and it's being vetted behind the scenes by ourselves and people within the organization. And one of the key things in this process is the idea of categorization, because then categorization leads to routing, it leads to all these other things. So how do you categorize the incoming information? And some of the categorization for clients can be, the categories can be very similar. And what the end results are is you take all this information and you have people within the company that said, this is category A, this is category B, this is category C. And then Aileen comes back and says, well, no, that's actually not the category. And then you have to have a conversation. And there's these really interesting conversations you have, which is Aileen is correct based on the definitions you've gave us. You guys aren't actually consistently categorizing your own content because you're human beings based on the definitions that you think you're operating by. So you end up almost like a business systems therapist where it's you, Aileen, and the customer um, analyzing how they're doing things and determining, well, Aileen is consistently providing this information. You are inconsistently. So we just need you to decide which of these things that you want to move forward. And the, there's some very interesting conversations where we think, oh, Aileen only got 85% on that. But then when we go through it all, we realized that she only missed maybe one out of a hundred and it was actually the human involvement of it. Or sometimes in that it, it helps in improve, improving their training manuals. So they'll have manuals that they give us as, as the guides. And then we kind of find, oh, well, actually the manual, although people are kind of assuming or interpreting it to be one way, it's not actually defined or written in the manual. So, you know, we get to improve their manuals. Or other times it's just actually that's not the right process. People are are doing something differently based on their experience, but you know it should be something different. And that's where Aileen helps call this out because when we're doing, as JC said, when we're doing the training, going, this is what Aileen had, this is what the agents are doing. They kind of, you know, it's a case of well, where's the mismatch? And it's actually really good learning and and really good um, improvement in the consistency for the contact center. So. A lot of them are getting great value even out of the training process, not just from training at Alien, but kind of going, oh, right, we were better understanding of our processes. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're really going to get closer to defining the problem that you, you want to solve better and there's certain steps to doing that. Talk me through a little bit about some of the outcomes. And I'm quite interested that you kind of you've made a bit of a niche in the financial services sector. Was that something that you, you targeted or something you kind of you yeah. fell into? And then on the and then my third part of my question, with all these different types of frontier models and the change is just exhausting, how can you stay relevant knowing so many different things are changing at any one time, particularly the costs? Okay, well, I suppose if I deal with the first bit of that and then uh, maybe JC, if you want to, to deal with the, the, the latter question there. So I think a bit about, you know, why the financial sector, so, it's it's not it's not only for that we do have customers in in other areas you know in, in retail and so on and uh, green tech and that kind of thing but I suppose one of the reasons it really appeals uh, in the financial sector is that our solution is, is very very accurate and audit, auditable and we well, I suppose we have a lot of experience w with our uh, existing customers who are in that space so we have a lot of understanding of how to do things like identify vulnerability uh you know handle regulated uh, situations so you know we, we work in a lot of regulated projects and ha understand the level of audibility that has to go into it the level of rigorousness that has to go in and our a a alien solution supports all of that so i think a lot of ai solutions that are out there are these kind of SaaS approaches where you you know you, you pay a seat license and it does something but it's doing something very generic when you get into regulated space, you really have to have lots of checks and balances of why did this happen? If it went wrong, where did it go wrong? How do we prevent it in the future? How, you know, it, it, having all of this supporting information and Alien uh, provides that. So Alien gives us the opportunity to do that. 
As I mentioned, it, do, it is a, a customizable flow process. So you know, it will work for any business process and it can integrate integrate into any system. But it just so happens that I suppose a, a lot of the, the larger enterprises are the ones where they're looking for complex flows. And, and you know, there isn't a, a, a sort of a, a competitor or direct competitor in the space who can do the level of uh, customization and uh, integration that we can. So that's where, you know, the, the financial space it, it, uh, it is quite a, an obvious target. But we are working with other customers who are doing, you know, flows of integration, different systems like for retail, we're doing things where we're yeah. Uh, linking to tracking systems or the logistics examples where you know people get uh, orders in in all sorts of different formats but it needs to go into a unified format for going into a system and having people emailing back and forth and going can you can you tell me these details or these details can all be automated and it just takes away the the, the effort and the cost associated with that so so jc the, wanna... the model so the models the frontier models so we would we would be using primarily heavy hitters, so it doesn't. We don't really care whether it's Claude or whether it's GPT. It doesn't really matter. But we don't really need to sit on the very edge of the the models. We don't because we have a highly highly modularized control system. So when um, the decision based models with GPT just came out recently, it didn't really have any impact. There's no wasn't any need for us to move forward into that. When GPT five comes out, will we adopt GPT five if it provides something that? is not provided by GPT-4 or if the new cloud comes out. But at the moment, our capacity to meet our clients' needs is met by the models that we use now. We, we don't find that we need to do a lot of fine-tuned training for the models other than building RAG systems for information. But the actual models themselves, the costs now have plummeted. They're going to continue to plummet. So the cost to savings level now is, it's, I mean, can you imagine the difference between now and 18 months ago? And we, we expect that to continue forward. Um, I think the only thing that we'll really be looking for is when we want to start adding more orchestration layers, you know, more complexity to automation so that there's less kind of configuration, we may be looking into that. But we are always looking forward, but we're just like the engineer that doesn't just upgrade to the next library because it came out. We, we move forward based on receiving value from moving forward. AI is no different than any other engineering tool. Really. Yeah, an important clarification there for, you know, innovation as we look at it is, it's not just, you know, academic research to, for, to see what we can find out. It's, you know, problem driven and, and solution focused. So, you know, we, we do look at all these new things that are coming out, all the, the various tools and revisions and so on. But it's Absolutely. to see, is there a real value proposition in, in, in adopting yeah. that or using that? JC and Stefan, thank you very much for joining us on the AI Ireland podcast today. They're calling from a company called Ardonis. Uh, they are in for a finalist for best application of AI in an SME. And we've been talking about their generative AI solution called Alien. Thanks again, guys. Thanks a million, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Thanks. On the 26th of November, join us for the 6th Annual AI Awards at the Marco Hotel in Dublin. This year's event promises to be our largest and most impressive yes, with over 300 community members in attendance and over 48 applications of AI in action. This truly is an incredible world-class event and we are inviting you to this event. Experience the excitement live because we're going to be capturing this with a world-class film crew and it's going to be streamed online. However, if you want to join us in person, Book your table now because opportunities are limited. If you're interested in sponsoring this year's awards, please contact me at Mark at AI Awards for more information and see the best in class of AI applications on the island of Ireland.